Welcome to the WSL Post Show. We mowed through a massive day of action here. We saw 17 heats hit the water from the Swatch Women's Pro to the Hurley, uh, the Hurley Lowest Pro. We've seen it all go down. I'm joined by a couple of legends of our sport. 88 world champion, champ Barton Lynch, as well as Strada Wasaluski, the tube hound. <laughs> it's good to have you boys on the desk. Oh, oh. <laughs> we love the barrel. But man, the action today was out of control. The liquid skate park lit up and it was fun to watch. And there was all sorts of stuff going down. Interferences, crazy airs, high heat scores, waves with heats with barely any waves. It was a, a mixed day of amazing action. Yeah, talking about barely any waves, that last heat was definitely one of those ones where Mother Nature just decided to elude the boys. And right now we do have the winner of that last heat on hand with our own Peter Mel. Take it away, Pete. Thanks, Rosie. Stuart, really scrappy heat. I mean, you had mentioned how consistent that heat was before yours, so you had an inclination that it was going to be kind of slow. Yeah, definitely, especially yeah, watching Mick and Joel go absolutely wild out there it was so nice, but I kind of knew it was going to be a bit slow, just that time of the day too, dropping tide, and um, yeah, as soon as I had third priority, that little wide one, I was like, I'm just going to surf it and put a score on the board, it might end up counting as a backup and then end up working so yeah thank god for that well at the end of the heat too you knows that how important that second score was too had priority utilized it well um you know how did you defend that kind of at the end um yeah i kind of knew i was in a good position because it was so close to the end and i wasn't really going to let up another opportunity and um i just had to surf it to, to my ability and probably could have went a little bit harder but didn't really need to, so yeah, I'm just excited to win my first three-man heat this year. Well, so are we. Congratulations, Stewie. Into round three. Thank you, Peter. Well, we've seen some amazing action today, and one of the heats that hit the water, we got to see Gabriel Medina. You know, he's world number three coming into this event, and what we love about this part of the year is it just starts to heat up. You see everyone kind of throwing everything but the kitchen sink at every heat that they're in, Barton. Heat up all right, he just took it to it. Here's that interference right here. Didn't back down, it was more of a lift. You can see the line in that one. Hey Strider. Hey, you know what, to me it's a 50-50 flip right there. There was, you know, it's a peak and they gave him the interference, but reality is he fought back. He came strong and he surfed really well through that heat. And it was, it was a great heat to be a part of for the other surfers because they had the opportunity to take down the former world champ, but not to be done. Melling and, and the other opponent just fell out of it, didn't have anything higher than a five, and Medina went to town. Well, talk about overcoming adversity. I mean, what's it like, Barton? You're sitting out in the lineup. You hear that you have a triangle and interference against your name. How do you come back and fight back and get the win? Well, I suppose the pressure's off at that point because no one else expects you to win and it's only, you've got everything to gain. This is the wave, got the eight, halved it to a four and got through this last turn spectacular. Exactly. I mean, Gabriel Medina coming away with the win, like we mentioned, with an interference call to his name. So just showing his confidence, the 2014 World <laughs> Champ just carrying through that amazing run that we've seen from him. And, you know, he's put his, himself in the conversation for the world title, like we mentioned. That heat score, obviously, the, the second wave uh, halved there for the interference. So definitely got a lot of confidence going through to round three. Yeah, definitely. Medina doing what he needed to do. The other two surfers basically got lost out there. But then we moved on to our next title race, guys. And this one right here, Tanner just went Godowskis on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Tanner. He did. I mean, could you do anything more on this wave? I mean, it's so important to see these local guys, these wild cards coming into the event and just throwing a span in the works by getting a 10-point ride, putting Matty Wilco world number two, relegating him to round number two. And it was all set up by this composure at the start there. He just paused for a minute, waited for it to stand up, and from that moment on, every turn was synced to perfection. The bottom turns were so low and drivey, and, and obviously the wave of the day. The beach lit up, everybody loved it. I could hear it, I was in the water, and from the back, all I saw were fins and half the board. So he was pushing every turn really hard and up through the lip, above the lip. Great surfing by Tanner. I love to see that confidence from him and obviously his father's telling him feel victorious and just bring that confidence into the st uh, state. Another person that was looking so good was John John. We were all speculating about his knee. It didn't seem to be bothering him in this one. Oh, I wish I had a knee that was that bad. You could do those <laughs> sort of turns. It was incredible and this was one of those heat strider where the waves didn't really cooperate. 
There wasn't many opportunities, but every one he got, he just surfed so silky smooth, did everything he needed to, and just looked so calm and controlled. No pressure at all in that yellow jersey. Well, he got a seven under priority. Those guys were just sitting out the back, didn't even look at the wave he got the seven on. So here's the reality is that this guy is putting up huge scores on waves guys aren't even looking at. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm not injured. I was just joking. <laughs> no, it's um, it's feeling great, 100%. And I, you know, I just been surfed the last couple of days. I just came straight to California after Tahiti and just got it, just started doing therapy and stuff for it right away. And I think that helped out a lot in getting the healing really fast. And so I'm just so stoked to be surfing. It was just a minor tweak to the MCL. And so, but all good now. Doctors gave me the okay to go surf and stuff, so that was good. And it was just on my last wave in the final in Tahiti, it just like crunched me down. And I've never had a little knee injury before, so I didn't know how bad it was at first. And um, pretty fortunate it wasn't bad at all. Well, I mean, looking at our, our cheap leaderboard there, John John Florence on top. This is the first time in his career that he's coming into the event with a with a lead like this. So, you know, what kind of comfort le comfort level would he be feeling coming into this event? Well, I suppose it could go either way, couldn't it? And that's what was exciting about today to see exactly how he responded, and he responded better than you could have imagined. Well, yeah, and the wheels came off for Wilco. Gabriel a little bit sloppy, but kept it together. But the most informed guy so far was John John Florence and he looked really comfortable in that jersey and hats off to him you know coming off an injury looked really powerful still had dynamic you know above the lip turns where he threw the reverse in so I love to see that I didn't put him on my fantasy team shame on me <laughs> Well, we can't help but really reflect on our top three. Obviously, at the disadvantage right now is Maddie Wilco in that round number two. So how much pressure is on his shoulders at the moment? Oh, it's enormous. And it, it seems like he's putting it on himself too. He's never been in this position, so doesn't have the tools or the experience to deal with it. He's up against Brett Simpson tomorrow in, in, in that first heat of the next round, and uh, that's going to be the interesting one. Yeah. We saw him crumble at Jay Bay with that fall. Today he did look really nervous, so it's a tough ask, a big, a big hill to climb and then handle that pressure. You've definitely got to be bringing your A-game and a couple of people that brought the A-game was Philip Toledo. He was up against Kelly Slater. We'll reflect on that and the women's round number two that hit the water. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more WSL Post Show. Welcome back, you're watching the WSL Post Show. Just switching gears, we've spoken about the Hurley Lowers Pro, now reflecting on the ladies' performances in round number two of the Swatch Women's Pro. Interesting to see both of our top seeds faltering and finding themselves in round number two. 
certainly was. And Tyler, had her, her heat yesterday was pretty much a shocker. She just didn't look comfortable at all. But today she bounced back amazingly. Wow, didn't she? She looked so strong. Uh, her first wave, not really as good as you thought we would see. But then the second wave where she opened up in that corner, let it all go. I mean, really just gouging out of the bowl. You know, she did a, a great job transferring on this wave. This was her first wave to get to the inside corner, but didn't finish well. No. But the second wave, let me tell you, she went bananas, Barton. She found a groove on that second one. That first one was really uncomfortable. But the second one, big turns, blows the tail there. Watch this car, just rails it, rah, just snaps <laughs> back into the pocket. Amazing surfing. And this one, this was the one that showed us why she was in that Jeep leader jersey and uh, why she's the leader for the world title this year. Well, something that could have really got, you know, Tyler Wright's back up is if she was up against the wild card, Bethany Hamilton, Bethany took her out, you know, in the Fiji Pro where she was touted to do well. So interesting to see her really fight back. Another lady fighting through this round number two was our world number two, Courtney Conalog. Yeah, Courtney, she's just strong. You can see it in her stature on the beach. She gets in the water, very confident and straightforward with her surfing. Not out of control crazy with technical stuff, but definitely just looking beautiful fundamentals down the line, beautiful open face, staying on that blue face, carving down into the bowl. We love to see that from the beach. The judges love it. And she did get a little jiggy with it off the end of some of her waves. She was throwing down some, some reverses, which I do love that she's got those maneuvers in her bag. Yeah, we did actually catch up with these ladies to find out about their form. Let's hear from both of them, Tyler Wright and Courtney Conalog. Yeah, I, I kind of um, heard it last night and it went a little bit weird and so I haven't actually got a diagnosis yet. We just kind of strapped it up uh, this morning and went for a, caught a few waves early and um, but yeah, pretty much just kept two waves is all I really needed out there and just kind of minimalizing um, like the excess of, you know, what I really don't need to do and but it feels good when I'm on the wave, it just kind of yeah, I have no idea, but it, it kind of hurts a little bit, so it's all right. Me and my strategy's been a bit off, and yesterday I was waiting for sets, and it just went flat. And even today, I was like waiting for the sets that are in Tyler's heat, and then ended up not coming till the end. And I think in that last year, I definitely pivoted the strategy a little bit. There was like 15 minutes. It was probably a little long to wait, but I was like, you know, this is round two. I don't want to lose out in this round and get 13th. And um, I know there's going to be waves, and I could always come in and get a five on the inside it's just like deciding that strategy and I was feeling great out there I was just wanting to get on the best opportunities well these athletes are just so incredible at adapting I mean talk about carrying an injury and just being able to pretty much strap it up and fight through the pain I mean Barton that just shows the mental attitude coming into these events and both these guys are like we know Courtney is just such a strong trainer isn't she she's right into it she's an athlete she's not just a surfer she's an athlete and she's got that that overall package and it gives her that positivity I suppose for Courtney it's just dealing with her expectation and her desire and that uh, you heard her talking about the result and not wanting a 13th. That stuff gets in your head and makes the whole thing a lot harder. Yeah, you could crumble with the cookie, but she didn't. She just <laughs> ate it all up and took it into stride and she made it through that heat. Uh, and she's got a great mental capacity. And, and for her, that's got to be her strong point. She's buckled before. The mm -hmm. cookie has crumbled and she hasn't picked up the pieces. And she's doing a much better job of holding it together now. And I like to see it. Talking about holding it together, Kelly Slater was one of those performers in Tahiti that just ran away with it. Now we really put our focus on him here at Lowers. He's won six times before. Up against Phil Toledo, it was a heavy ask. It certainly was, and, and, and he hadn't warmed up. We hadn't seen him around, but he came out very first wave and was firing. Philippe, though, a lot of talk about him not being powerful. I don't get it, mate. He is so powerful, so strong. He's a, you know, he's a dynamo for the size of his body. Beautiful car this rider. Yeah, he is the guy to beat in this size surf. Hands down, no question about it, the best small wave surfer in the world. Kelly Slater, you might not have seen him warming up out here at Lowers, but he went to a wave a lot like Lowers just this last week where he went out and found himself a perfect warm-up platform. So he was definitely ready, as you can see when he gets out here. He's won here so many times, you know he's comfortable here. To see him go out and surf this good and comfortable, he's stuck to his game plan, stayed on the face, and would have won this heat had he picked the right wave. In the end of that heat, he gave up this wave right here. He took the first small wave, 
leaving Jeremy and Phil out the back. Phil got the third wave of the set, which is this wave right here. Good night, Irene. All Ooh. the way to the bank, baby. Well, Barton, I'm so on board with you. I mean, I think Philip Toledo has pinpointed, you know, really working on that rail surfing, working on that power surfing, and it's just so important to kind of, you know, see those weaknesses that people have, have touted on you and turn them into strengths. I think that's what he's done. Oh, that first turn on that 9.33 was dynamic. And against the world's best, who is so powerful, he just showed he's got everything. Well, another heat that we were so looking forward to was Joel Parkinson, Mick Fanning, and Jatson Andre. And just thinking about these three surfers coming up against each other in round number one, we were waiting for fireworks, and that's exactly what we saw. <laughs> there was some real cat and mouse between Joel and Mick, too. And you could see that it meant a lot to them. The old rivalry was alive and well. Yeah, you, you can't get past that. No matter how old these guys get, they're going to be in their wheelchairs trying to outdo each other. <laughs> and you know it's true. The fact that Joel won this heat, comboed his opponent. Mick is going to be just killing himself tonight. He's not going to go to sleep thinking about it, and he's not going to stop thinking about it until he gets Joel back, let me tell you. Well, we, we've spoken about Mick Fanning, we've spoken about Joel, but someone that quietly went to work in this heat was Jetson Andre. I mean, he had some impressive waves himself, but look at the power of Joel. Oh, Joel was just <laughs> on fire. You could tell it meant a lot to him to get that win. Got the highest heat score of the day with surfing like that. These guys were on fire, but as you said, Jetson was doing some incredible stuff, some futuristic stuff. He stuck to the lefts. The rights have been scoring all day, so that was his problem going left. But I think he knew against those two guys, he needed to mix it up. And if he went to the air like that, both you and I try to believe that to be an amazing high scoring ride. He got to the inside, ripped it all the way, um, but the judges didn't quite reward it like we thought it may have been. Well, I feel like he got overlooked and only because he was up against the two smoothest surfers in the world. Yeah. He was just a little choppy and if he would have had the linkage that the other two surfers had, he would have won that heat because he went mad above the lip. The technical surfing that he did was outrageous and I love to see it, Jaddy. Keep it up. Next round, you're going to make it through. Well, he's going to be stoked with that and taking that confidence through such a high scoring heat. And obviously we saw, like we mentioned, round two of the Swatch Women's Pro, 11 heats of round one of the Hurley Lowers Pro. So much more to look forward to. We do have highlights from today, so stick around and watch that. And also check in at 7.30 tomorrow morning for the WSL Dawn Patrol. We'll be back.